Hello guys, it's Mario Casares, and today I'm going to show you how to camera track with a photo scan. So um, in the end, not only do you end up with a camera track, but you also end up with geometry that matches your scene. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the program that we're going to be using is called Meshroom, and you can download this for free online. I'll put the link in the description. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is take your video, and you're going to want to convert that into an image sequence. And this is literally just an image for every frame. Okay, and just like any other photo scan, what you're going to want to do is select all these images and just throw it into the scanning software. All right, so now all my images have loaded in. And before I start, hit start, I'm going to go ahead and save it, and um, yeah. All right, so now that I saved my project to a folder, I'm going to go ahead and click start and just let it do its thing. Okay, just a little tip here. If you want the camera and the mesh, it's going to take a long time. But if you literally just want the camera without the mesh, just delete from here onwards. So just click delete and then just delete the rest of these. You're not going to need them and you just need these. So yeah, um, you'll still be able to follow the tutorial. But if you just want it to be faster and only want the camera, delete those. Okay, that's it. Bye. All right, so now the track is finished and we'll go ahead and get the assets we need in order to have a camera track and the geometry. The geometry is already created by default. So if you go to the very end here, um, without even doing anything, without exporting anything, you right click, hit open folder and look, you got the mesh right here, the material, the textures and all that stuff is finished. Now we just need an animated camera and all you got to do to export those is go ahead and just right click come up to export animated camera and you just need to feed it the structure from motion output left click on the output here put it into the input there we're going to click on this so if you want undistorted images from the camera you can go ahead and keep this on here but i don't want those so i'm just going to go ahead and unclick that all we're going to do is just right click and hit compute and it'll be very quick um, once that finishes right click open folder and you'll see your camera right here in Alembic format. All right, so now we have Blender open, but um, you're going to see a very big problem here is that if we try to import the Alembic, Blender will crash if you try to import it. And here's our camera Alembic file. Uh, double click it and it crashes. So you are going to have to use any software that can convert that. And the software I'm going to be using is Maya because you can download this for free. All right, so um, now that we have Maya open, we're going to go ahead and fix this issue with Blender crashing very quickly. So we're going to go ahead and go to File Import. We're going to go to the location of the file. All right, and we are going to import it. And you, as you can see, it's upside down and the orientation's all messed up, but please do not change this because um, we want it to match. So we're gonna go ahead and set the frame rate to be the same. So mine is from zero to 332. Um, which you can see in the uh, frame sequence. We can go ahead and set the frame rate. Uh, 24 frames per second is what I work with because it just makes it so much easier. Select the camera. We're gonna go to cache, Alembic cache, export selection to Alembic and hit the little box. We're going to make sure all these settings are on time slider. Step is one. Um, just make sure that the file format is Ogawa down here and not HDF5. So make sure it is Ogawa. And then we're going to go ahead and hit export selection. Just choose where you want to save it and then save it. Okay, so if your Alembic actually isn't working in Maya, which sometimes happens. So if I were to drag the Alembic that we just did in here and it says unrecognized file type, that is only because in the Windows Settings Preferences Plugin Manager, Alembic needs to be turned on. So just turn on all these ABC... Uh, export import bullet and then now whenever you do it it will work um, I couldn't figure out what was happening the first few times that I was trying to do that but yeah all right so now we're in the final stretch and um, I went ahead and opened blender we're gonna just go ahead and file import alembic and we're gonna use the alembic that we exported from Maya which is right here so I go ahead and open it boom there it's working and it no longer crashes um, all right so now that we have the camera we're gonna go ahead and import the obj file that it created for our geometry all right so now we have our camera and our obj in here and so now if i hit zero to go into the camera you can see that it is tracking along perfectly so we have the geometry and we have the camera track and it is matching beautifully um, just to test this i can go ahead and put the background image in here so you can see it real quick all right so i just imported the original footage and now um, if we play this we can see that it is matching perfectly and um, our mesh is following the um, image sequence that um, this originally came from so now not only do we have a camera track but we also have mesh so that we can go ahead and add stuff 
stuff into the scene, uh, do some visual effects. And um, also, if you're running into issues where they're not matching and they're kind of misaligned, make sure that these are correct. So this will tell you what frame that you should be on. Um, it says 55 here. It should say 55 here because if you're on some other frame, like it says 56 and this is 55, then it's not going to work. So just make sure that your frames match. Otherwise, your track is not going to match. But yeah, that's pretty much how you take a photo scan and use it as a match move and as geometry. This is going to save a lot of time for visual effects. Um, I don't think this will work on every shot, as I'm pretty sure if there's someone moving in the shot, then it's going to fail. But for shots where there's no one in it, um, I feel like this is a pretty effective method. So my final remarks is that I just really wish that there was an easier way to change the Alembic file instead of going through Maya, since I know that that's kind of a little bit difficult. But yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Um, thank you for watching and bye.